Hello everyone. This is Wang Bowen from the Vela team and Xiaomi. I'm happy to attend this year's Natex online workshop. Last year, we did some works about the virtual I.O. frameworks and did a presentation about it. Now, six months have passed. We have made some enhancements in RP message and virtual I.O. This is also the topic of my presentation today. Here is the outline, which can be divided into five parts. The RP message framework refactor, Latex to Latex or Linux communications, virtual IO PCI transport support, vhost framework support, and something about the future works. The first topic is the RP message framework refactor. Before introducing the RP message framework refactor, I would like to briefly introduce how the RP message services use the RP message API to send and receive messages, so you can better understand why we need to refactor the framework. First, I want to ask what is the RP message? RP message is a message mechanism implemented on top of physical transport layer such as the virtual SPI uh, and UART to communicate with a remote processor. Let's briefly describe the RP message usage. As shown in the next figure, RP message communication can be roughly divided into two stages, connection establishment stage and the communication stage. First, in the connection establishment stage, both the local and remote call call the RP message create endpoint to create an endpoint. The parameter name is used for the endpoint branding, and the parameter callback is used for receiving messages. Afterwards, the endpoints on both sides are bound based on the name, and both sides can send messages to each other. For example, if local call want to send a message to remote call, local call can call the RP message send to send a message to a remote endpoint, and the remote endpoint callback function will be called to process this message. Based on this mechanism, we can implement many useful RP message services, such as the RP message file system, RP message socket, and the RP message syslog. So, why we need to refactor the RP message framework? The next diagram shows the architecture of RP message framework before refactoring. The top layer is the RP message services, which call native RP message API provided by the OpenMP library and the Natex extended RP message API to achieve their own functions. And the notice that the native RP message API is a companionable with a different transport layer by a well-designed port layer. But the Natex extended RP message API is highly coupled with the Natex RP10 framework, and RP10 is highly coupled with the RP message virtual transport layer. So, the RP message services use the Natex extended RP message API can only work with the RP message virtual transport. In order to make all RP message services be able to work with all RP message transport layers, such as the RP message SPI or UART, we have to refactor the RP message framework. So, how to refactor? Like OpenMP library does, we also introduced a port layer in Natex RP message framework and the net RP message transport layer to port 8. The RP10 framework is also modified to port the new RP message, RP message framework. As you can see in this figure from the right from the left to the right. Then, all RP message services can run without modification on top of any RP message transport layer. And this work has been upstreamed to the community. 
This is a pull request link. The next topic is the NATX to NATX for Linux communications. And first, I will introduce the IP message virtual based communication. QMU is a free and open source emulator. It allows the developers to test the software on a variety of different hardware architectures without preparing the physical hardware. And NetX has been supported to run in QMU for a long time. But unfortunately, the cross core communication feature has not been utilized in QMU. So, this feature can't be tested well in emulator environment. But now we have supported it. The next figure shows the architecture diagram of how two networks in QMRO communicate with each other. We have two virtual machines, VM1 and VM2, and both of them run networks. The green part is the IV shared memory plan device, which is QMRO provided the PCI device to make two virtual machine, machines be able to access the same memory in host OS. Based on this shared memory, we can implement the cross-core communication between two virtual machines. First, we implement a PCI IV shared memory driver in NetX based on the PCI framework. Then, we implement an RP10 IV shared memory driver based on the PCI IV shared memory driver. After that, two NetX can communicate with each other through the RP message. In addition, we also support the latex to Linux communication in QMU. Also based on the IV shared memory plan device and the RP message virtual transport layer. As shown in the next figure, the difference is that the virtual machine 2 changed to Linux. Like what we do in latex. We also implement a PCI IV shared memory driver in Linux and then implement a remote POC driver IV shared memory remote, IV shared memory remote POC based on the IV shared memory driver. And more, we also support various IP message services not compatible with NetX, such as the IP message pin, the IP message socket, the IP message syslog, the IP message file system, the IP message TTY and the IP message sensor. Then I want to introduce the IP message SPI UART based communication. As shown in the left figure, in some scenarios, two chips on the same board need to communicate with each other, such as the Android Plus, the Atos Dual System Smartwatch solution. The two chips do not have the shared memory, so the IP message virtual transport layer can't be used. We add the new IP message transport layer, IP message SPI and IP message UART in both NetX and Linux to achieve this goal. Of course, all already implemented IP message services on NetX and Linux can run, can run on new IP message transport layer without any modifications. The diagram on the left shows the architecture of IP message SPI and IP message UART. Both in NetX and Linux, the IP message SPI and UART are based on the existing driver frameworks. And we were already did some tests on our platform and achieved good results. The right, side, the right side shows the results with IP message pin. With the IP message SPI transport, the transfer speed is around 9.3 megabits per second and achieved 77.5% of the maximum theoretical speed. And with the IP message UART transport, the transfer speed is around 80 kilobytes per second and achieved 87 percentage of the maximum theoretical speed. Then, 
The next topic is the virtual LPCI transport support. Last year, NetEx has supported the virtual L framework, various virtual drivers, and the virtual I/O MMIO transport layer. This page shows all the pull request links about the virtual I/O. Thanks for the contributions. Yes, virtual I/O MMIO is a very friendly and commonly used virtual I/O transport layer for embedded system. But unfortunately, some hypervisors do not have good support for the MMIO transport layer. An example is that the Archon hypervisor only supports the virtual I/O PCI transport. We can know this message in the official documents. So this year, we add the virtual I/O PCI transport layer support based on the PCI framework. The diagram on the left shows the flow about how virtual I.O. PCI devices register to the virtual I.O. bus. First, the virtual I.O. PCI transport layer is a PCI driver and of course will be registered to the PCI bus. Then, the PCI controller scan all PCI devices and also register them to the PCI bus. For every virtual I.O. PCI device, the virtual PCI driver pop function will be called to initialize the virtual device and register the virtual device to the virtual bus. Finally, the already implemented virtual driver's the pop function, pop function will be called to drive these virtual devices. This is how the virtual PCI transport works. And then the first topic is the vhost framework support. First, I would like to explain why we need the vhost framework. Now, the virtual drivers in LaTeX can only be used in hypervisor environment with the virtual I/O, MMIO, or PCI transport layer. However, we also want to use the virtual drivers in a cross-core communication environment to improve the cross-core communication performance. This is why we need the vhost framework. As you can see in the left figure, in hypervisor environment, the virtual drivers are implemented in LaTeX and the virtual devices are implemented in hypervisor. They communicate with each other through the MMIO or PCI transport layer. To make virtual drivers be able to work in hypervisorless environment, we should implement the virtual devices framework in LaTeX like Cumulus does, and we call the new framework be vhost framework. This diagram shows how the virtual drivers are used in cross-core environment. The main CPU can access the physical device in the remote core through the virtual and the vhost framework. Let's start from the main CPU. The existing virtual framework and the virtual drivers do not need to be modified, but we should implement a new remote port transport layer. The overall framework of the slave CPU is similar to the main CPU the difference is that the virtual I/O framework becomes the vhost framework, and the virtual driver becomes virtual device. And both sides require the remote port transport layer support. We have implemented the vhost framework and some simple virtual device, such as the vhost RNG. But more virtual devices and the remote port transport layer support are still in developing. The next topic is about the future works. In summary, our future works contain two parts. First, we need to implement the remote port transport layer for virtual drivers and virtual devices. Then we can use the virtual drivers and the devices in the cross-core communication. Secondly, based on the first point, 
we can implement the virtual socket. Then we can use the VSOC address family to communicate with the Linux. That's all. Thanks for listening.